what we're going to be going through here is issuing, exercising, and the termination here of stock options using the fair value pricing model. So for example here on 11X1, Corporation A's stock options included here. One, they granted options to their executives to purchase 20,000 shares of their $10 par common stock here. And two, the options were granted here on 11X1 and were exercisable here two years after the date that they were granted if the employee was still working for the company or still employed by the company and they expired five years later here. And what we're looking at here is a two year vesting or service period required here before the employee can exercise those stock options. And three here, the option price was set at $50 per share and we're going to have a compensation expense was estimated to be $800,000 for these stock options. So that's what the company says they're going to have to, uh, the expense that they would incur on these options that they'd essentially be paying to the executives who purchased these options or purchased the stock. And that's based on a fair uh, value pricing model. Okay, and for here, the following stock option activities were for A here, we had 3,000 options that were terminated here on 41X2. That's where one of the employees or the executives here resigned. When the market price on the common stock here to purchase those common stock with those options was $70 per share. And B here, 12,000 options were exercised here on 331X3 when the market price per share here was $80 per share. Okay, so let's go up here and look at how we handle this problem here. So this is again where we're using this fair value option method here. That's where the market market price of the stock really hasn't any re has no relevance here when we're doing our accounting for it. It certainly affects uh, the um, uh, the executive who's buying this stock here, but when we come to it accounting here, it doesn't have any relevance. What we're going to do for our accounting here, our recording this option, it's going to be based on the stock option price here of $50 per share that the company set. So what we're going to be looking at here, the uh, options were, I had a grant date here of 11X1, and there's going to be a two-year vesting a service period required on these options. The employee has to work two years here before they can ha have any options or uh, exercise any of these stock options. So the stock options are going to be ex exercised here in 331x3. So what we have to do with this vesting or the service period, this is where the expense or the value of the options for the service period here has to be expensed out. So let's go and look at what we're talking about here. So what we set up here is a compensation expense account on our income statement. And that's based on the uh, what the company estimated these uh, stock options here to be uh, the expense to be worth on them and that's what uh, they'd be essentially paying here to the employee and they're recording that as a compensation expense here on the income statement and they're going to do that evenly here over those two-year vesting periods. So uh, what we set up here we set up the compensation expense account but then we have an associated account that we use here and moving over to our balance sheet we have to set up a paid in capital for the stock options and that's what we're going to be that's going to be the account that's associated here with this compensation expense so let's go first and look at our compensation expense how we'd record it so looking at the end of our first year here 1231x1 well we're going to debit that for four hundred thousand dollars okay so our compensation expense is four hundred thousand well that's based on the fact that total compensation on these stock options was estimated to be eight thousand or eight hundred thousand dollars and one half of them of the uh, of that expense goes into this first year here so one half at eight hundred thousand equals four hundred thousand so debit or increase our compensation expense here for four hundred thousand and then we go over here and credit or increase our paid in capital here equity account for stop options on our balance sheet here for four hundred thousand dollars again 1231 x1 okay so now comes along 41 x2 here this is where uh, 3,000 of the shares here are going to be terminated and that we said because the employee or the executive resigned from the company and 3,000 shares were associated with this employee. So those he's not going to be able to take those stock options so we have to remove them here from our compensation expense. So on 41X2 60,000 credit our compensation expense for 60,000 and that's based on the fact here uh, for the period or for the year we'd had 400,000 here of uh, compensation expense here and 3,000 of the 
20,000. So there's 20,000 option, stock options granted here, and 3,000 of them are retired. So that fractional amount, 3 three twentieths here times 400,000 equals $60,000. So on 41X2, credit or reduce our compensation expense by $60,000 for the 3,000 shares that are terminated. And then our balancing entry here would go to our paid in capital account here in stock options, debit or reduce that here by $60,000. Okay, so now we come up with our next year here, the end of 1231X2 here. And we're going to debit that here for $340,000 for the uh, associated compensation expense for that year. And that's based on the fact here that, well, we had that total $800,000 worth of expense that we were going to recognize here. But one half of them, uh, one half of the 800000 here would be for the, that uh, second year here. But we only have 17 20ths of the uh, stocks remaining or options remaining here. We get rid of 3,000. We terminated 3,000 of the 20,000 here, so we're only left with 17,000 of the 20,000 stock options here. So that fractional amount times our half times 800,000 equals 340,000. So our compensation expense here for 1231X2, the second year, we debit that here for 340,000. Now moving over again, the uh, credit would go to our paid in capital here for stock options 1231X2. 340,000. So we increase our paid in capital here in stock options at 340,000. Okay, so we've taken care of our uh, compensation expense here uh, that we had to realize the compensation expense evenly over that two year vesting period, plus we had that take care of those uh, 3,000 shares that were terminated. We had to reduce our compensation expense by that amount. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at where the, the executives exercise their stock options. And again, we're using that $50 per share um, option price. We're not using the market price that was stated. We use the option price. So here's the case where 12,000 shares here were optioned, uh, optioned here or purchased here by the executives on 331X3. So this is where they're exercising their stock options. So what we would do here on our cash account uh, for stock options here, we would debit that here for $600,000. That's based on the 12,000 shares here of stock that were issued here times that option price here, $50 per share. Debit that for $600,000. Okay, so now what we would have here, let's go down in the paid in capital. Now you notice here, this is an equity account. The cash here is an, is an asset account. So our equity, the, just the, your signs are reversed here. Debit plus here, debit minus, and so forth with the credit. So let's move down to our paid in capital. Just so you understand that here. I didn't line these up here, but the paid in capital is an equity account. So let's move down to that here. So what we're going to do for that 331X3 where the stock options were issued here are exercised here. Uh, we're going to debit that here for $480,000 and that's based on the fact here that we're looking at the total 800000 here uh, to the paid in capital account for stock options here and 12 20th or 12,000 of the total 20,000 here that were issued here are going to be exercise. So 12 20ths of 800,000 gives us 480,000. That's again where we exercise 12,000 stock options here for the 20,000 shares that were granted. Okay so that fractional amount that's how we come up with our paid in capital here for stock options 480,000 and we reduce it based on the, the exercise of those stocks. And this paid in capital account that of course is going to flow into our common stock equity account here. So we're trading our paid in capital stock options for our common stock equity accounts here. Okay, so now let's come up with, we're going to work with our common stock account here. Okay, in the $10 par, 12,000 shares that were exercised. So we'd issue common stock here for those, those 12,000 shares times $10 par per share. Credit that for $120,000. So common stock was issued here, 12,000 shares here on 331 x3. So that, that's where we get that. So now we come down to this additional paid in capital common stock and we're going to find for the common stock excess over to par. And that's really a balancing account here. So let's look at how we uh, handle that here. So credit that for here $960,000. Okay and that's based on just adding up our that's a balancing account here between our cash and our reduction to paid in capital here and our 
common stock par account here. So let's look at our balancing entry, how we got the 960000 So we had a debit here in our cash of 600000 Then here we had a debit or reduction or paid in capital here of 480000 So what is that? 1080000 adding up and then our then we balance it with our credits here on a common stock par account here a uh, stock that was issued credit that for 120,000 so the difference here gives us a, we have to have a credit here of 960,000 so we had 600,000 here we would uh, so add another 480,000 here for our debits subtract our credit here that we already credited 120,000 in our uh, par account here for common stock so the difference here we'd have to credit that for $960,000 so that's how we came up with that so just remember we're in this case uh, when we go back here, we're dealing with this compensation expense, and that was based on that pricing model, that fair value pricing model here, and we had to allocate the expense on those stock options over, in this case, two years, but we also had to deal with the fact that there was some retirement here of some of the stock because uh, employee quit, retire, or quit here, and he could no longer take those options, so we had to reduce that compensation expense by that amount here and then remember this compensation expense here uh, the uh, what's attached to that here is a paid in capital account or what our balancing entries go to our paid in capital account here as an equity account for stock options here so those two accounts are tied together here and then when the options are ac actually exercised we reduce our paid in capital account here and then it flows into our common stock account here, another equity account. We're just trading one equity here for another equity. Reducing the stock options when they're exercised here to paid in capital account, moving over to additional paid in capital here uh, for our common stock. But remember, the additional paid in capital here for common stock was no more than a balancing entry between the cash receipts here and then the reduction of our paid in capital here to our debits and then a credit here to our common stock. So that gave us our balancing amount here for additional paid in capital. Okay, so that takes care of our issuing, exercising, and termination of some of the stock options. And again, we were using this fair value option method here. And everything is, in this case, is based on the option price that the company set for the, um, for the uh, share price on those stock options here. And it's not based on the market price. Now, of course, who's ever exercising or buying the stock or taking the option is interested in the market price but when we come to our accounting here it's based on the stock option price established by the company okay so that takes care of our discussion here on these stock options here Ex issuing exercising and terminating some of the stock options